All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, what I would like to do with you folks today is go over a very simple introductory lesson for PECS martial arts in our Taekwondo. Uh, I apologize for the state of our home dojang, but you're here and I hope that you were excited to join us. We're going to start off with a few very simple Korean commands. The first of which being chaya, where we put our feet together, our hands at our sides. It means very simply attention. We're going to be standing chaya. We're going to bow to one another. Kinye. Bowing, if you did not know, is a really important demonstration of respect from one person to another in all of Asian culture. And bowing, as part of martial arts culture, is also a really important part. We're going to find that we bow a lot to one so we're going to start off with what's called fighting stance. We're simply going to take one foot, take a little step back, hands closed into strong fists. We're going to make these strong fists by making sure to roll the pinkies down first, allow the rest of the fingers to follow, rolling fingers all the way down until we've got thumbs. Then we're going to take the thumbs and roll them over the first two fingers of those fists and bring the hands into protect ourselves. Very, very simple. We're going to go back to chaya again and step back into our fighting stance. From here, we're going to do the very first, most basic technique in all of martial arts besides the punch, and that is what is called the front kick. What we're going to do is we're going to take the back knee, we're going to bring it straight up in front of us, and we're going to snap the foot out and back, pop. We're going to bring it back and set it down behind us where we started. One nice, smooth, even motion. Knee up, out, back, and down. Okay? We're going to repeat this three or four times. Knee up out, back, and down, making sure that we are relaxed and we breathe as we do this. If you have any kind of knee troubles or hip troubles whatsoever, allow the front foot to turn out because pivot just a little bit, not too far, as you kick out and back and bring it back and set it down. And as you do this kick, you want to do your best to snap the leg so that the foot returns, the knee stays in its nice high position, and we set it down again. A couple more times, knee up, out, back, and down, one more knee up, out back, and down. Now we've practiced one leg a fair amount, it's time to switch our feet and try with the other. The other knee is gonna come up and straight ahead, snap out and back, and back down, okay? A few more, knee up, back, and as I'm doing this once again, I'm allowing the front foot to pivot out a little bit as I throw my kick out and back, and as we do this next kick, I want you to give a big hi-ya, ki-ya, ay-ya, whatever it may be. In our classes, because we are a Korean Taekwondo school, we use the Korean term for energetic yell, which is kia. So I turn the front foot out a little bit, I bring the knee up, kia, and out and back. Ready? Kia. And one more. Ready? Kia. And we're gonna switch our feet again. From here, we're gonna do our reverse punch. We call it a reverse punch because we are using the back hand to deliver this punch. I'm taking this back hand, I'm sending it forward with the elbow staying down, allowing the elbow and shoulder to turn as I extend it fully out in front of me. I bring it back to where it started. As I throw this punch, I allow the back foot to pivot on the ball of the foot, just like we did with the front foot on the heel. I'm allowing the back foot to pivot on the ball of the foot so I can get my entire body behind this punch. If all I do is just use the arm, this very limited motion, there's not a lot of strength there. If, however, I use the entire body to crank behind that strike, pow, out and back, I get a tremendous amount of power behind that punch because I'm now using my leg muscles, my torso, my whole body behind that punch as I strike. So a few more, a punch, yep, out and back, yep, pow, out and back, out and back, and one more, bang, out and back. And now we switch. The other side is now going to punch, keeping that elbow in low. I pivot the back foot. I send that hand out. And as I'm sending the hand out, the elbow stays low, rolls over, the shoulder turning as I extend the punch fully out and fully back with that reverse punch. A few more. Ready? Go. Out. Go. Kip. Go. Kip. Two more. Kip. One more. Kip. And switching again. Now from here, we're going to return to our chayet. We're gonna once again bow to each other, king yang, and then we're gonna separate our feet a little bit. We're gonna pull our elbows back and push our hands out in front of us. We call this jumbi, three and four, ready. 
From here, we're going to do what we call four count front. It's a very simple self-defense technique. We're going to go over this step by step. Okay? First thing we're going to do with our four count front is take our arms and cross them in front of our chests. We're then going to step back, and we can step back with either leg. And as we step back, we're going to have the arms separate out in front of us. Now, it's very important as we both step back and separate the arms at the same time. We separate the arms because we want to break out of a grab or a push, something that's coming at us, our chests or our necks from the front. In addition to that, we are stepping back to prepare for our next technique and to create space in us and the bad guy that is trying to get us. So once again, from Jumbi, we cross the arms, we step back and separate the arms out. This is step two. Three, we're going to bring our back knee up. And we're gonna shoot that same front kick we practiced at the beginning. So knee comes up, bang, and throw that front kick. Now, this front kick can go to many fun places. We can throw it low towards a bad guy's knee. We can throw it to the middle towards a bad guy's private parts. Or we can throw it a little bit higher up to the stomach or chest. We do want to avoid throwing it up to the face, despite your incredible speed, power, flexibility, and coordination. You throw the technique really, really high and you miss, bad guy's gonna be on top of you with your foot up in the air. This is a bad place to be. Be in class, teach to do this front kick either to the knee or the groin to do a lot of painful damage and make that bad guy not want to mess with us anymore. So once again, we start from Jumbi, we cross the arms, we step back, break out, we throw our front kick low, bang. Now we get to move on to step four. Step four is where we've got a lot of fun options. So one, cross the arms. Two, step back, separate the arms out. Three, throwing our front kick, bang. Four, as we put the foot down, we're gonna take these fists that we used to break free, that we made earlier, we're gonna take the pinky sides of the fists and we're gonna aim way up high at the face, bang, 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 throwing them at that face to drive this bad guy away. Now, it's really important in self-defense, and a lot of FBI, law enforcement, other studies have demonstrated that one of the biggest deterrents to an attack is simply to aggressively fight. If your first instinct is that as hard as you can to yell and scream and bite and claw and thrash about, 75% of attacks immediately stop with the attacker running away because they were expecting a victim. And if instead of providing a victim for them, you provide an aggressor, someone who is on the offensive, someone who is attacking the attacker, you might, not a guarantee, but you might immediately put an end to that situation. Starting from Jumbi, we cross the arms. We step back and break free of the grab, the push, whatever it may be. We throw our front kick to that groin, causing them to double over and expose their face. And then we throw these hammer fists right up at their face, driving them away. If necessary, we step in, continuing to throw these hammer fists, driving our bad guy back as fast as we possibly can. Again, cross the arms, step back, separate the arms, kick, bang, and hammer, hammer, hammer. Wonderful. So we're going to return to Jumbi. And I'm going to talk to you guys for just a second because I do know for a fact there are going to be some children watching this video. And something that I want you all to understand, really, really important, is that the martial arts that we teach, we teach some pretty simple stuff at the beginning. And honestly, a lot of folks, when they're first starting out, they're not going to be capable of doing too much damage. But what could, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. What could very well happen is you decide that you're going to play ninja, you're going to play karate, you're going to play taekwondo with your little brother, your little sister, with a friend, with a neighbor, even with your parents, and you're going to throw your kick. And you're going to throw your kick right to somebody's knee or right to somebody's groin, and all of a sudden you have hurt someone. And you need to understand that what we teach in our martial arts school, at Pex Martial Arts, is not a game. It is not a toy. That is not to say we don't have fun, because we certainly do, because fun is a vital part of learning. It's really, really essential to have you motivated to learn more. But if you choose to be irresponsible with what we teach, if you choose to throw these hammer fists at your dog or your cat, to throw your kicks 
at your friends, your siblings, your parents. These are techniques that with training, with practice, with increasing your strength, you can do serious damage. And I would be very sad for you to be sad at the damage you have caused that you did not mean to. So I cannot make this clear enough. As much as we love people practicing at home, you want to make certain that you have the permission of those around you to practice. You want to make sure that you do not surprise someone with a kick to the back of their knee or a punch to their side or whatever it may be. You want to exercise responsibility with what we teach you and respect for what we teach you. Otherwise, you might cause harm that you do not cause. That said, we are going to continue to learn how to cause harm. And we're going to be moving on to a little bit more adult-oriented content. We're going to talk about some mean things. And if that's not okay with you or with you and you're watching this with your kids, be cautious, be careful about what it is we're about to go over. So once again, starting from Chayette, Aoing, King Yang, we're going to take our step back into our fighting stance. Now I'm going to approach the camera to show you this. We're going to be doing what's called a palm heel strike. <laughs> oh, and the sneeze is real. We're going to be doing what's called a palm heel strike. And a palm heel strike, you're usually using our fists in what we're doing, but a palm heel strike, we curl the fingers down twice, tuck the thumb back and inside, so we're projecting out this portion of our hand, the palm heel. This part of the hand is really, really strong at causing some damage and pain, okay? Punches are lovely, punches are awesome. The trouble with punches is that all too often we want to strike to the face. When we strike to the face with our fist, we are striking all of this bone and strong skull matter that's protecting important parts inside of our heads. And so when the fist meets the skull, meets the ridge of the eyebrow, meets the cheekbones, meets the chin, we could do really significant damage to our hand. Now we might do damage to the bad guy. Great. However, if we throw that punch and we mess up our hand at the same time, we are taking away weapons we can use. Palm heel strike, on the other hand, is lovely because this meaty part of the hand can be used as a bludgeoning instrument against the face. And you can drive that palm heel into the eye socket, into the nose, into the jaw, the teeth. Do significant damage to that, and the most you might come away with is some cuts on the inside of your palm as opposed to breaking the bones and ligaments of your fingers. And that's a really, really important difference. The other thing that's so essential as you get better and better at throwing your palm heel strikes, and eventually you would practice these palm heel strikes on boards, at walls, things like that, is this palm heel strike can be very useful for creating a situation where you are not being the aggressor, but you are prepared to do so. What I mean by that is you step back, you hold your hands up. This makes it look like you don't want any trouble. Whereas this, even though you're prepared, makes you look like you want trouble. And there's a huge difference. And the important thing with self-defense is self-defense can be something physical where you're doing damage. Or it can be something mental where you're creating a situation of you don't want any trouble. You didn't know that uh, she was his boyfriend or she was his girlfriend or you didn't mean to offend them in that way. And hey, take it easy. I don't want any trouble. And the lovely thing with this stance is that this is fighting stance, but with the hands open. And with just a slight curling of the fingers and a tucking of the thumbs, all of a sudden you've got these bludgeoning instruments for a bad guy that's coming at you. Now we're gonna throw these palm heel strikes. What I want you to do is get in that same fighting stance, but we're gonna open up the hands. We're gonna twist, just like we did for a reverse punch, pivoting in our back foot, and drive this palm heel strike. But instead of going straight out in front of us, we're going to direct this a little bit higher. So you can see that I'm covering up my own face in this camera. When I'm throwing this palm heel strike, I am aiming for the face. This is very, very specific, striking up towards those eye sockets, that nose, that chin, those teeth, driving that palm. Then as I pull this palm back, I send the other hand out, right at face height. And all of a sudden, I have struck twice with a very simple motion, pow, pow. Okay, and so this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be throwing two palm heel strikes. We're going to start off with one using the back foot, pivoting hard, and then pulling this back and sending out the other at the same time. Okay, one, two. 
Okay, practicing together. One, two. Nice and slow and steady, making sure we've got the rotation down. One, two, and two more. One, two, last one. One, two. Now, we're gonna increase the speed a little bit. When I say go, you're gonna fire off one followed by the other in rapid succession. Ready? Go, one, two. Go, one, two. Go, one, two. Two more, go, one, two. Last one, go, one, two. And now we switch our feet. We practice with one side, we do wanna make sure that we're practicing with the other so we've got some evenness pivoting for our rotation, and we're developing that full body coordination. So once again, we're starting with the back hand, rolling the fingers down, tucking the thumb off the side, twisting that hip, pivoting on the back foot to drive that palm heel up to the face. Then the other hand, boom, up to the face. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Speeding up a little bit. One, two. Go, 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 pow, and one more, go, pow, pow. return to Jim B. We're going to go back for a second to our four count front kick. We cross the arms just like we did before. We step back and separate the arms, and this time as we separate the arms, we open up the hands. Hey, I don't want any trouble. This isn't a fighting thing. This isn't me prepared to smash you in the face. This is me thinking, oh, maybe they just bumped into me. Maybe this wasn't a big deal. Maybe we can stop all this without any need for violence. Oh, we can't. Then here's what's going to happen. Instead of just throwing that front kick and using our foot to do damage, we're going to assume that they're in a little bit closer. We take our back knee, doing our front kick chamber, not even the full front kick, but just the front kick chamber, and drive it up in front of us. If they're in close, we might hit them in the stomach, might hit them in the groin, might just drive them back a little bit. And after we drive that knee up in front of us, we land and we throw those same palm heel strikes up at the face. Now, the reason that this combination, while we're always, always, always going low and then high, is because the reaction the body has to being struck in different places. When we go low first, if I were to receive a low kick or knee strike or whatever it may be, whether I get struck or not, my body is going to tip because my hips are going to go back away from the attack because I don't want to get kneed in the groin as hard as possible. And because of this, my face becomes more exposed. And all of a sudden, bam, bam, I'm getting struck in the face with these hammer fists, with these palm strikes, whatever it may be. And all of a sudden, because we've been using some strategy, some intelligence, we are now doing some devastating damage to our bad guy who is trying to get in our face. So we're gonna practice this, and what I'd like you to do as we do this, we're crossing the arms, we're stepping back. When we step back, I want you to pick whichever leg feels more comfortable for you. Okay? Right now, we're not gonna worry about both legs. We're gonna just focus on one, and get that one leg down well. So we cross the arms, we step back and separate the arms, opening up the hands, hey, I don't want any trouble, oh, you want trouble, knee strike. Bam, pulling those palms up to the face. Okay, again, cross the arms. Stepping back, separating out. I don't want any trouble. Bam, pow, pow. Okay, a couple more. Cross, step back, separate. Knee strikes, palms. And one more time. Cross the arms, stepping back, separating out. I don't want any trouble, buddy. Knee strike, palms to the face. Now again, this four count front kick. We love this maneuver at Pex Martial Arts because of the options we have with it. Now, another option for this move, we cross the arms, we separate them out. We want to make absolutely certain that this bad guy is not going to mess with us anymore. We're going to use our knee to do this. What we're going to do after we've separated the hands out, we're going to reach out with our hands, with our fingertips, and grab a hold of something. That something might be their shirt. It might be their ears. It might be their hair, whatever it may be. But we're going to reach out and grab something. We're going to pull our elbows in. Now, this is really, really critical. If I try to just use my arms to pull and nothing else, and I'm pulling past myself, I do not have nearly the strength as if I pull my elbows in. The act of pulling those elbows into my body allows me to engage my core muscles, allows me to engage the entirety of my arm and shoulder muscles to 
putting that bad guy in and down. I'm not focusing on the downward motion. What I'm focusing on is just pulling my elbows in and the bad guy does what I need them to do because of the action I'm doing. As I pull those elbows in, I take that back knee, whichever knee it may be, could be the right, it could be the left. I pull the elbows in and as I do this, I drive the knee up and in. Now at this point, bad guy's gonna be hurting something off. I could let go and throw those same palm heel strokes. I could let go with one hand, hold on with the other, swing my body, and throw one of those elbows you see in MMA and in action moves. I've got all kinds of options at higher levels of X martial arts. We actually do some takedowns, some throws. So it might be that I separate out the arms, I grab a hold of that bad guy, I throw a knee strike, and I set my foot around that bad guy and slam them into the ground. Something that we would teach at later levels where you have the coordination, the leg strength, and more important than all that, the ability to fall down safely. And believe it or not, something as simple as falling down is something that we teach regularly in our self-defense class. I'm not going to do that today because I don't know what kind of surfaces you guys are working on. If you're in your kitchen, I don't want anyone bunking their head on the linoleum or the wood floor that they've got behind them. But in practicing self-defense, self-defense is about protecting yourself. And something as simple as knowing how to fall down is a really, really important thing. And honestly, for me personally, the most important self-defense skill set I learned from practicing martial arts myself is falling down. Falling down has saved me from breaking arms, from spraining or worse, breaking ankles. Because goodness knows, we live in Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin is not known for its nice, tepid winters. It is known for sheets of ice and having to waddle like a penguin to get to your car, else you slip, fall, and bust yourself up. And so knowing how to fall and being well-practiced at falling is one of the most important self-defense skills I've learned in martial arts. So all that said, let's do a couple more of our four-count front kick. We cross the arms. We step back and break out. Whether we have this closed or open could be up to you. You can develop your own way of doing this for what's comfortable. If the notion of throwing hammer fists at a bad guy, throwing a front kick to drive them back is what works for you, fantastic. That's the self-defense that is good for you because it's doing something. If the idea of breaking free, grabbing that guy, pulling them in close, driving your knee up into them so hard you can feel their breath on your neck, and then palm heel striking them in the eye sockets, if that makes you, creepy as it is to say, happy, great. Okay, doing damage to the bad guy in a way that is, for now, comfortable for you. But once again, the most important thing with self-defense is that we're doing something. We cross those arms. We break out. We throw our front kick. We throw those strikes. We cross our arms. We step back and separate. We throw those palm heel strikes. We throw a front kick. I did the wrong order, but it's great. And the reason it's great is because it is so crucial in doing self-defense that we do something. We become the aggressor. That we have the mindset of going on the attack against someone who dares put their hands on us, someone who dares impede upon our safety. You deserve to be safe. And that is a really important key of self-defense in general, is having the mentality that you deserve to be safe. So a couple more, crossing the arms, stepping back, breaking out, throwing our front kick, and throwing those hammer fists. Cross the arms, stepping back, separating out, throwing our knee strike and our palm heel strikes. Cross the arms, stepping back, breaking free, grabbing a hold of that bad guy, throwing that knee strike. And then for our advanced students who are not here right now, smashing that guy on the floor. All kinds of options. And you me. So. I do want to thank you very much for joining me for this abbreviated class. Something like this is what we do when we're open for brick and mortar style classes, where we've got classes between 30 and 45 minutes for all different ages of students. At this moment, because of what's going on out in the world, we are currently running classes online via the wonderful app. We want to very much thank the MESBA, the Monona East Side Business Association for kindly 
helping promote our school and showing us a great deal of support in these really difficult times. We really appreciate the Monona community and what they've done for our school over on the east side. Uh, I had something else really intelligent to say, but I completely blanked because I did not make notes. Very silly of me to do so. Uh, one more time, I would like to thank anyone watching this video for very kindly giving me 25 minutes of your time. I appreciate it. I hope that you are responsible for anything that you have learned here with me today. For those of you who don't know, my name is Master Masaki. I am the owner and head instructor of Pex Martial Arts. Pex Martial Arts has been in business since 1971 in the city of Madison. We really appreciate being a Madison tradition and how long we've been with the community. Uh, myself, I have about 25 years of martial arts instruction uh, experience. My head instructors at our various schools, we've got a grand total of 50 some years of instruction experience. And then my personal grandmaster, Grandmaster Peck, has far more than that. He has been teaching since before I was born and continues to teach to this very day. I thank you again very much for your time. Thank you again to the MS MESBA. And with that, we're going to end class standing in Chayet and bowing to each other. And to you, I say, Kam Sam Nida, which is Korean for. Thank you. And now, unfortunately, I must approach the computer so I can end this stream. I hope you all are staying healthy and safe, and I look forward to seeing you someday soon.